إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يدلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا إنه أصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة برعة وكل برعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن اهتدى بإحسان إلى يوم الدين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى أما بعد فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديثه من لا يرحم لا يرحم أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وفي القرآن الكريم قال الله سبحانه وتعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاعف عنهم واسفحوا إن الله يحب المحسنين صدق الله وصدق الرسول أما بعد all praises and gratitude are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we send our praises and our shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah wa subhanallah wa ta'ala. Subhanallah ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, today, inshallah, my reminder with us is very brief. But it is something that very much is important in our lives as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very much important in, in very much important in protecting the unity of the ummah and fostering the development of the strength of Muslim brotherhood among each other my dear brothers and sisters what I'm about to talk to us about here today to remind us of this ayah that I mentioned where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fa'fu anhum wasfahu Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us Pardon, pardon them and overlook Allah loves those who do good In another ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Imran وَالْكَاثِمِينَ الْغَيْذِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says And those who restrain their anger And pardon people Allah loves those who do good the similarities between these two ayah, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the ending of both ayah, Allah mentions about Allah love those who do good. From the, so from the goodness of the actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves in both of these ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about forgiving others, about pardoning others. In the second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this immediately after he mentions about those who restrain their anger, those who control their anger. The reason why I'm reminding us about this, my dear brothers and sisters, is that sometimes we tend to forget that we are all human beings. 
We are people who are riddled with weaknesses. And very often in our lives we'll commit mistakes. And many times those mistakes might be offensive to others. And many times those offenses to others, we, do, we are not even realizing we are offending them. But what ends up happening? We end up breaking the relationship between ourselves, brothers among brothers, children from parents, spouses, friends for our entire lifetime. Brotherhood of the Ummah is broken because from amongst ourselves we find it difficult to overlook the fault of our brothers and our sisters. And the sad reality, because of the nature of the culture of many people, that breaking in relationship doesn't stop there. It spreads. If I have a problem with you, I'm going to tell my friend and encourage him to have a problem with you. If I have a problem with you and our children go to school together, I'm going to spread this venom to my children. And as such, it passes on to the next generation. And it spreads like that, my dear brothers and sisters. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he beautifully said in the hadith that I mentioned, Man la yarham, la yurham. That whomsoever doesn't show mercy will not be shown mercy. Whomsoever doesn't show mercy to the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not show mercy upon that person. Where does mercy come from, my dear brothers and sisters? It comes from the place of understanding that that person, he made a mistake. And maybe they themselves are too weak or too proud to say they made a mistake. However, it is upon us to do something that which is good. Hence the ending of the ayah, Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. We can't always expect, my dear brothers and sisters, we can't always expect everyone else to do something that which is good. My father used to teach me as I was learning to drive. He said, when you're on the road, think of every other person there as mad people. They're going to always do the wrong things. But you always have to make sure that you steer straight and do the right thing. As such, my dear brothers and sisters, let us apply this to our lives based on the teachings of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is mentioned that whoever adopts these noble manners is closer to the mercy of the merciful, his pardon, his forgiveness. As it is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he relates to us that there was a merchant who would lend people money. And if, anyone, if he saw anyone in difficult circumstances, he would say to his children, pardon him his debt perhaps Allah will pardon us then Allah did pardon him and I'm specifically mentioning this hadith because money tends to be the root of many problems among people you lend someone money and maybe that person let us think a bit from their perspective for a moment very rarely are you gonna find a truly evil person who's gonna come to you and intentionally come to borrow money from you without the intention of ever repaying it very rarely are you going to find such people. For the majority of the people, in all genuinity, in all truthfulness, when they're in a need, they come to ask of assistance. And their intention is to repay you that debt. And yet, that right is upon you. You, need, you have to receive that money back from them. This is your right from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one is denying that. But in our, in our efforts of doing goodness, let us think, think about yourself in that situation. Maybe, maybe that person, they come and ask you for help, ask you for assistance. And unknown to them, they are faced with unknown challenges, challenges they couldn't foresee. Challenges that will prohibit them from repaying you. You're right, true. From repaying you something that truly they should have taken responsibility for. But this is where the rahmah comes. This is where the mercy comes from within our hearts. Let us think about, our, about ourselves. How often don't we sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How often don't we commit mistakes and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, All the children of Adam are sinners. All the children of Adam are sinners. And sometimes if we were to truly examine the concept of sin, 
In actuality, some have explained this to be a rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, we hope for the mercy of Allah. We hope for the reward of Allah. We hope for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As such, my dear brothers and sisters, extend this mercy to the fellow creations of Allah, specifically our Muslim brothers and sisters, and furthermore to all humans in general. Ibn Qata'ad he said, which person has the highest standing? He was asked, which person has the highest standing? He replied, the one who is abundant in his pardon. These was from our righteous predecessors. Ja'far ibn Muhammad he said, for me to regret after having pardoned someone is more beloved to me than to feel regret after punishing someone. Again, for me to regret after pardoning someone, forgiving them, overlooking their, their shortcomings is most beloved to me than to feel regret after punishing someone. Sometimes we reach that point in our lives, very often we'll forgive someone. They're going to do something, okay, that's all right, we're going to deal with them again. They're going to do something, we're going to forgive them again. And after a time, we feel that regret. Especially sometimes overlooking their mistakes might cause us some, some, some form of harm some form of great inconvenience and we might regret it we're human beings but this this righteous predecessor is telling us for him it is better to feel that regret of forgiving someone of pardoning someone and trying to be trying to put them in our good graces than to regret punishing them and doing something bad against them it is always better to extend a, a, extend what what is it extend something sweet something good than to extend a stick than to punish someone it is reported of the authority of one of the salaf that the slave enraged him terribly he considered taking revenge on the slave you know this is something my dear brothers and sisters even to the slaves in the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam we have to treat them in a certain way so this this one of the righteous predecessors he had a, he had a slave and the slave, he made him really angry. And we know slaves are at the mercy of their owners. So he wanted to punish him. But right away, the slave reminded him of the ayah, well, kathimin al ghayr and those who restrain his anger. So then, as, soon as he was about to punish the slave, the slave reminded him of the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, okay, I have restrained my anger. Then the slave, he continued, well, afina an nas and those who pardon people. So then the man said, okay, I forgive you. I'm not going to punish you for anything. And then the slave continued, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. And Allah loves those who do good. And subhanallah, this righteous person, when reminded of this ayah, he said, okay, I let you go for the sake of Allah, I have freed you. My dear brothers and sisters, many khutbas you would hear telling us of Quranic ayah, and a hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This story is a lesson for us. Very often we will be reminded of something, something we probably hear a thousand times and we throw it aside. Because why? I've heard it so much, I don't want to hear it anymore. That's a measure of our iman. That's a measure of our taqwa. This is a measure of our consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when we are reminded immediately, immediately it is mentioned that patience is at the instant of the event, not afterwards. That's not patience. At the instant that something happens, how we behave, if we demonstrate patience, that is when patience is required. Many of us, we think, okay, after we had our share of, of, of expressing ourselves and reacting to that situation, then we're going to have patience. No, my dear brothers, let's not get it twisted. We must be people who are in control of our emotions. Hence, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned us, well, kathimin al ghayd control your anger. Control yourself. And that control can only come from a person who is cognizant, who is aware, who is fully conscious of themselves and not being overcome by their emotions and by their desires. Because when that happens, my dear brothers and sisters, we open the door for shaitan. We open the door for shaitan. And as such, it brings me to the final part of my khutbah here today, my dear brothers and sisters. And this is protecting the sanctity 
of our Muslim brothers and loving each and every one of them. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Quran, whoever honors the symbols of Allah, such is from the hearts of piety. And what are from the symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He mentions in His farewell pilgrimage, in His farewell hajj, in the khutbah, He mentioned, verily, your blood, your wealth is sacred like the sacredness of this day of yours, in this month of yours, in this city of yours. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, a Muslim is sacred to another Muslim, his blood, his wealth, and his honors. These are taken from the symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, whoever honors the symbols of Allah, such is from the heart of piety. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he reports to us, he said, let none of you patronize another Muslim. Since a small Muslim to Allah is big. And sometimes we misconceive this word patronize. Patronize means is that you might speak to someone good words, but you speak to them in a manner which you feel or you put yourself above them. So you speak down to them, even though your words might be good. You belittle them. Do not patronize each other. Because that person who you think is less than you, that person who you think is a smaller Muslim than you, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu is reminding us, as since a small Muslim is to Allah very big. My dear brothers and sisters, this khutbah it is a very simple thing that I would like for each and every one of us to take away to our homes, to our colleagues, to our family. Control our anger, number one. Do not allow our anger to take hold of us and make us say things and do things that we will regret. Number two, learn to forgive others. Forgive them with no expectation of anything from them. Do not give that forgiveness because you are waiting from, for something in return. The only reason from this, for this is for the sake of Allah. So no matter what they do afterwards, do not stop forgiving others. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed us this. And number three, my dear brothers and sisters, let us be careful. Let us be careful that we don't violate the rights of others. Let us be careful that we do not dishonor the symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us be careful to treat our Muslim brothers and sisters with respect, with honor, with dignity, with love. With love. With love. You know, in a couple of days, many people around the world are going to be celebrating Valentine's Day. When these things happen, we might not partake in these things. But it's a time, every instance in our life is a time for us to reflect. Reflect on what is missing in my life in goodness. Love, my dear brothers and sisters, is a factor that helps each and every one of us to control our anger, to forgive people, and to protect the rights of people. And as such, my dear brothers and sisters, let us fill our heart with love, genuine love, true love, not a hypocritical one, not one that we show outside, but in our heart is something different. And by that, my dear brothers and sisters, may each and every one of us be from among those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may accept our goodness. May each and every one of us be among those people who show mercy to others so that Allah will forgive us. So Allah, Allah will accept us and that we may help to bring the ummah together, bring our families together, bring our friends together, bring our communities together so that we may not be divided. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa da'wan. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن اهدرى بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر ومن عذاب الجهنم 
ومن فتنة المحيا ومماتي ومن شر فتنة المصيح الدجال اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم أعيز الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا في سوريا وفي أفغانستان وفي أفريقا وفي مصر وفي سودان وفي كل مكان أمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واستعينوا يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقيموا الصلاة